Today is March the 6th, 1985. The following will be recorded at the Willoughby Historical Society meeting held in the Willoughby Township Hall at 8 p.m. The topic for the evening will be the Iceman. The following... sat in the kitchen alongside the coal stove and washstand. It wasn't much to look at, I suppose, but a garden of delights for a three-year-old. Our icebox served as a sort of all-purpose storage unit. On top, sweating away madly in hot weather was the ice. On the shelf right below were spoilables, things like meat and cream and butter that had to be kept as cold as they could. On the second shelf were bottles of milk, no cardboard cartons in those days, and beneath that, the play area, or what I considered the play area. The bottom shelf, which opened with a separate door, was a storage den for things that didn't have to be kept cold at all, that is, potatoes, paper bags, and my personal favorite, bars of soap. At least a dozen bars of soap were always down there. 
Every day after I'd finished lunch and had a good nap, I took out every bar of soap, sat on the floor in front of the icebox, and built my own personal versions of castles in Spain. I piled one cake on top of another. That defies the law of gravity, I can recall my mother saying, though I had no idea what gravity was all about. I only knew that if you made the pyramid too tall, the whole business came crashing down. A big event each week was the changing of the ice, which actually happened twice a week in summer and once in winter. The block of ice that you started with the previous week underwent a total transformation by new ice day. When it, when it was installed, it was so big that the iceman had to chip and chip to make it fit. It was a milky color and smoke poured off it. It looked really frigid. If you touched it at that stage of the game, your finger stuck right where you put it. Heaven forbid if you tried to lick it. To discourage me from doing this, my mom often repeated the story of a young boy in Germany, or was it Turkey, who lived many years with his tongue impaled on a block of ice box ice, to his great embarrassment and total ruin of his social life, because he rashly tried to take a lick. However, if you waited a couple of days, it could be licked with no danger. Only brand new ice was a total no-no. As it got old, it not only shrank, it lost its milkiness and stickiness. It got to look just like a big ice cube, an ice cube that's been floating around in a drink. It began to change shape, too. Instead of just getting smaller, the sides gradually sank in. If left long enough, the sunken areas would meet in the center. Before that happened, you had to get new ice. You did not get ice box ice from a store, especially not if you lived on the fourth floor of a walk-up apartment like we did. Blocks of ice are not the lightest things in the world. The size needed for a standard ice box had to weigh at least 20 pounds, maybe more. I've never lifted one, but I'm judging from A, the weight of several gallons of unfrozen water, and B, the pained expression on the face of the iceman as he lugged it up all those stairs. Because of all those visits he made, you got to know your iceman pretty well. I'm not sure if the ice industry was like bartering mostly in the hands of Italian-Americans, but our iceman, Mike, was a first-generation Sicilian who ran his business single-handed. He answered the phone, drove the truck, cut the ice, and personally carried it up and squeezed it into your ice box. Where he lived, I do not know, but he was always in the neighborhood making deliveries. Whenever you walked along the street, you saw him popping out of cellars or descending into them, delivering ice to janitor's apartments and going into grocery stores and saloons with huge blocks he could hardly lift. He had a green truck with white lettering on the side. All it said was ice, painted in old English letters about four feet high. Many a time I'd stand around watching, light the ice and go through his paces, and quite a show it was. The truck was all open in the back where his stock was kept. Thrown over the ice were heavy brown blankets to keep the sun from getting at it. For some reason it worked, I don't know why, but it worked. Today you see water dripping from refrigerated trucks, and here, we, here were just a couple of brown blankets doing the trick. The blocks of ice were arranged in pre-cut sizes. Because they were put on the truck nose to nose, they got fused together. This called for a few chops with the ice pick, a big harpoon Mike carried at all times, and like magic, they were separated. If the shape looked a little askew, Mike chopped some more until the block was perfectly square. Then it was picked up with a pair of tongs, deposited in a weather-beaten old bucket, and set off on its destination. If the weather was hot, a small brown cloth was tossed over it. If not, it went as is. From this point on, the mode of transportation was foot power. Mike hoisted the barrel to his shoulder and marched off with it wherever the trail might lead. Um, yeah. um, there's some pictures here that uh, Bill Rook, of course, Bill Rook is probably the best known ice man around in this area. <laughs> in fact, the only ice man that I've ever known. And uh, he did send some pictures, and his truck was green with white lettering, right? It was always that way, and that's where they described it. In. So I'll pass it around and you can kind of look at them. There's some other pictures here he had too, they don't have to do with the ice. They probably had some, used some ice at on his party, but he gave these, you can look at them afterwards. Excuse me, Fred. How is everyone? I turned the heat down, I thought it was getting hot, and how are you now? Is it all right, or do you want more heat? We, we could have some more. <laughs> we could have some more, yes. I think, you know, Maybe we could ask uh, Bill how long he was in the ice business and some questions like that. Uh, do, do you want to just tell us some things, Bill? And um, but you know who you got it from, uh, how long you've been in the business, where you delivered, where you got your ice, and uh, and like that. So if you can just tell us some of those things. 
Well, I'll tell you about my dad. I started with my dad, you see. That was a naturalist. He proved in the labor of the quarry. Then I was taxed in sawdust for the summertime. And he had a ice house about two stories high, high as a two story house. And he had to get that in wintertime, of course, and pack it in sawdust. Then in the summer, that was before he had trucks and horses. They'd go on the lake and tarp over it. They'd wash the sawdust off before he could pack their ice boxes. And sometimes the, you know, some of the people didn't have no outside faucets, so then he'd have to walk next door with a pail and peel back a pail of water to wash the sawdust off. So he was down there for 15 years. 15? 15 years. And he didn't want to do the same one that I took over with the hard fish game style. Of course, I could have him saw this, just brought it down to Fort Erie and fed it along the lake. And that was done after 25 years. And right after the war, the business got so big. I started with about 35 customers. After the war, it got so big, I've got over 200 customers. So that meant 16 hours a day. It started in dark in the morning and it finished up in dark. And at that time, down on Fossil Road, if you know where that is, yeah. that's where it started. And there I was in the point. And I had a, a flashlight with a, a blasted point. And I asked my customers, I said, I'll be very quiet. I come up there in the dark and let the back door unlock or give me the keys. I had a lot of keys for the house. And I said, I'll be very quiet. Go in the house, take all the vegetables out of the ice chamber real quietly, take the old ice out, put the new cake in there, and then you have to split up the old ice to get that back in also, plus the vegetables and the beer and the pop. <laughs> <laughs> then lock the back door and don't make a, wake up the people. Then about uh, 7.30 or 7, we got daylight, of course. <laughs> Everybody started getting up. So I done that for 25 years. Uh, was that ice that you got from the lake? Could you eat that ice? Was it clean enough? At that yeah, time? It was clean enough. Well, once in a while, there'd be a little uh, seaweed in there or a uh, little sand. But my dad, he started to make the natural ice off of the quarry. So almost at the start of the health team, he said you had to go into Lake Erie. So, which he did. But I don't think that was much better than the quarry because the quarry had uh, springs and it was nice, clear, clear water. See Lake Erie, that rivals up. When there's a big storm, and sometimes it freezes. Then you get a lot of sand and uh, the seaweed. I think the quarry water. It really was. They had nice springs, you know, in there. They had regulations then too. Right? Oh yes. Yeah. Did uh, Did he get all the ice from the winter? Did that last him all year? No. Sometimes, in, uh, after Labor Day, he'd run out. Uh huh. And then uh, he didn't have to go to Buffalo. It was uh, the artificial ice plant was starting it. Refrigeration. And they had to go over there on the ferry, on the ferry. And I think at Webster's, or there were different ice plants in Buffalo at that time, bringing a little ice over with the horses. There wasn't no trucks. Come up the garrison road, number from the highway, to his roads. Of course, the people after Labor Day, they moved to the Americans, you see, and they were moving in right after Labor Day. So it was the end of the season. Did you have commercial businesses, uh, like? Did you supply the hotels or like that as well? Yes, I did. Willis's, a certain extent. Willis's. The one in Germany? Mm -hmm. No, Willis's. And when did you start delivering around in this area? That was later on. Uh, uh, do you have any idea what year, like, you're the only ice man most of us remember around here. Yeah, well, I started in 29. 29, yeah. delivering around here. I told no, you. not around here. Oh, along the lake shore. Oh, I see. Uh, around here, uh, I'm still in Germany in Black Creek. I come across from the Anglican Church. Right south from the uh, Kentucky Highway, and then hit Black Creek, and then come up from Germany and out to Stevensville. One time I went way up to Netherby to uh, Pete Willie Cook. It was about two to five. I had two to cut up there. I was right up on And I started uh, charging the people uh, 60 cents a hundred, and I worked for 25 years, and I ended up with 60 cents a hundred. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What about your father? How much did he charge on the ice? My dad, he charged a different rate. He had, uh, he charged by the week. Oh. It all depended. Some people had two free ice boxes. And he charged according to what, how much ice 
But there's an awful lot of people, usually on the Saturday, they want to have 50 pounds egg cream for ice cream. Not only the homemade ice cream at that time. Boy, was that good. <laughs> so they had to have extra on the weekend. And you have to freeze the stuff before you bought that time, it would have come on price for ice. And uh, where did you purchase your ice? Uh, Fort Erie Arena. Fort Erie Arena. And Fort then Fort you built your own ice house there. Well, that was later on. I had a small ice house here. Oh, the whole thing. Five, six months. I'd work when I'd come down to the steamers, walk some time, I'd come out. And then instead of going way back to Fort Erie, I had a small ice house up here in the road. So I'd finish my route. I'm busy. Save a lot of drive. I brought it from there. You know, the other lines, the parking car, no one wants. Yeah, we'll take care of the town. Yeah, at the time of that, we're going to have a couple of lots of things. Yeah. Do you ever get over up the uh, Niagara Boulevard? Uh, little ladies over there. From Black Peacock? Well, I had a few cuts. I was coming to deal with my ice man when I was first married. Uh, <laughs> and we had, uh, we had a nice box. And, and I, I, I can't remember who it was. Right it was right well, where Mr. Edwards lived. Edwards. Okay. 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 Did you know any other ice men around here? Like there was a... Uh, Yourself, and then I see a teal, somebody with a green teal. Well, a teal is an ice man in Crystal Beach. In Crystal Beach. Yes. And one time I changed there to the later in the year that they changed from the quarter to a dealer. And they had a big storage there. They make ice all their long. And I can't find the pictures of them, but I had some cutouts in these years. Uh, they were way up high, like ice in January. Oh. But that was all uh, refrigerated. It wasn't back in size. Oh, I see. It was kept the block. Uh, it was all natural ice, or was it? No, that was our fish. That was our oil fish. fish. Yeah. But first, we had a hard. And we had 1,800 tons of that building there. That's about ice. 1,800 tons. Anybody got any questions they want to ask yeah. Bill? Yeah, I'm going to ask Bill, how did you get up a little sand building because the lake's carrying ice? There, just a bag of hard. You can't carry it. Carry it up. Carry it up. That's high. Why don't you go to school? Yeah, well, I thought I had Rose Hill and Window Point there. Window Point, that's as far as I went west. Yeah. Down the bottom of the road. But right out of the beach there, that must yeah, be a big town going up there. Well, 50 pounds in each hand. Or I put up, some people had insisted they had to have 100 pound cake. So that means I had a, a, a tarp made especially to hold 100 pounds and just shoulder back. And up the hill you go. And that's high. But remember, I was only 16 or 17 when I started, and you're strong. How much does a cake of ice weigh? Uh, you, you probably cut the ice out when your dad was making ice with the team and an ice plow. Yes. And uh, that would be, uh, what, 18 inches square? Uh, it was uh, 22 inches. Uh, so what you call a pond. Uh, first, you had to find where you're going to have a pond to cut the ice. Yeah. And probably have to scrape the snow off. Yeah. So the frost would go down and make a thicker cake of ice. And uh, it would have marked out 22 inches square. But I remember Dad saying, I was, I was quite young at that time, it proved so uh, better that winter that the cage was square. Uh, what I mean by that, it was 22 inches all the way to the And that's, that's a big key. That would be way, way over 100 pounds. Yeah. Maybe yeah, it depends on the winter how what the thickness would be. And what would a cake of ice, 22 inches square, 10 inches thick, be? I'll say it's probably around 100, around 100 pounds. I oh, used the artificial cakes that they had at the artificial ice plant. They were made uh, a good 300. Yeah. But then they put them through the machine with the saws and the marker all the 50 pound cakes. Then you cut the ice pick, whichever you want. Yeah. When I loaded on my truck, I <coughs> cut them into hundreds. <coughs> it right better. Did you have any ice picks with your name on them? No. Did it? Did you have any left? Maybe two, three more. Boy, we'd love to have one of the museum. <laughs> <laughs> we got an extra one. <laughs> I'd like to have your name out there. <laughs> now, one day, one year in the night, it was the early 30s. The lady was in free gold. So all these yeah, ice companies on the lake, all right at the port forward, they all had to get a chip in. I came from the lake of the woods on Rio. Mm -hmm. In April, in the four trucks, they had to go out of the wagon. It's five hours. Drive about a mile down to the ice house. 
and we uh, pack it for the summer time. And it was warm, and the water was just running out of those uh, waves. But that ice was just as clear as old wind. You look right through it, wherever I came. The of the woods, I believe it was. But they said at that time they had a big crater machine, and they'd run that uh, ice through there, and everything was accurate. Just like the Grand Place was clear right now to, to pack it. So you got some of that ice, did you? Yeah, at that time. Yeah. But that was just one season. When did you build your ice house out here? Your, um, where you used to store your ice? In the 40s. In the 40s, huh? Yeah. I remember that. Well, I think Charlie has something you want to ask you too. Uh, did your dad just have the one ice house out of the lake, Bill? Yeah, just the big one. Uh, where you so live? He did have uh, uh, private homes. Uh, maybe he had a uh, small ice, I mean, say, a small ice house for a private person. He had five or six of those that he filled all the time in the wintertime. That was up to the, either the owner of the uh, home or the gardener to keep those ice boxes filled wherever he had had those ice boxes for the private. But an ordinary customer, he was, he was peddled to one of the uh, you had to keep those ice boxes filled. Were your customers always good? Pretty much, pretty much. How many men did your dad hire to build that big ice house in the winter time? Well, I would guess. Well, very hard. Six or eight. Six or eight men. He had two or three teams. And there were two men on the Lake Erie at the pond. They were older. Two or three teams. He was a man for a man. Or a dad had two teams of his own that he hired out. I forget why he paid for the teams, but I believe the men. At that time, was, he paid every two fifty or three dollars a day. And that was good money. It was very good. Usually, you paid two fifty for a man, you paid flat for a man and a team. Possibly. Yeah, I know that. I don't know why it was a team. It wasn't a man. It wasn't a man. How are your days? I saw it here in the river. And my dad and Blue Morning Star. You used to go about Morningstar Road. I went along with up there. And that, that was nice. I used to get right across to, <coughs> from Jesus' store. It's deep water in there. Eight or ten feet. But yeah, it was clear ice. And then we made it on our own pond there. Yes. Morning Morningstar built his ice house off the pond there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Right across from Bill Sauer, wasn't it? Right across from Charles. Across from Charlie's. Yeah. Do you remember all who worked for him? Or that that's no. I know one was Bert Ort, because yeah, Bert told me about that. He also told me about a Meisner that uh, cut out of the river yeah. at Black Creek, well, George well, Meisner. Yeah, yeah. 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 He some ice yeah that, that, this is what he said. Yeah. He, he had a machine to cut the ice. Yeah, but they started with it, and then you had to finish it by hand. Yeah, you saw it happen. Yeah. You it out of Great Lake Street. Yeah. John, what do you remember about ice? Two. Did you have well, ice, or did you have an ice box? Uh, well, we got one later here. <coughs> but when I was a lot, very young, first I can remember about ice. All the neighbors around there, all the farmers had an ice box. Did you have one, friend? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> when you're all the neighbors had one, there would be a case of three or four fellows get together, go down the line and quick, but the closest. I see down the road there, and of course, I can first remember they cut a saw all the time. Have a like a process of one man saw and a little hand. Regular age saw they have a little cord for teeth. An ordinary cross cut saw, and then they go together and they build a race house. The race house left a little space. Well they could build a board and they didn't have rock wool insulation and fiberglass on it. They had a partition filled in saw. I well, left the ice a little space away, I just six inches of hell in front of the patrol. Away from the wall, and pile your ice up all the way up, and pack it tight, and you fill that space with sawdust, and a quarter so of soap with that. I worked for a neighbor when I was a kid, I don't know how to handle it, but then 11 years old, I guess. Once in a while, I'd have to go out at noon and dig out a chunk of ice. Very tall, and the base with the trunk was too big and quite a Cover the rest all up again. <coughs> and I opened my hallway, 
Rock Hill was ice house when I was in my teens. But by that time, there was a guy cutting ice down on the creek. Bill Summerall, I guess it was. At the time, Hank Willick had a, a nice plow and a bunch of shoots and the shoot to the ice out, you know, slide, it slided up into the ice house or out of the creek. And a bunch of tongs and pipe poles. And we it was so well, some of them it's easier to go down and give them five or ten cents a case or whatever. They told you up. Well, all you put on your sleigh in a few minutes, three or four guys just slide it up on the shoe. <coughs> so he didn't, rather than go to the trouble of cutting it anymore, why he bought it for somebody. Get three or four sleigh loads and enough. Now that, well, I had a very young, I don't know, I suppose maybe I was seven or eight or ten years, I don't know how old I was at the whole ice house at Mount Rose burned down. But they had a huge ice house over there. My father used to work there when I was very little. He walked there across what's the uh, ship or creek the canal was and built at a freeze. He walked across the creek. If it wasn't a froze, you'd have to walk all the way around with a ship or to get over to Mount Rose Yard. He had a huge ice house. It used to take, I think, about ten days to fill it. And they put in, I think they'd unload seven cars at a time. Pull a train load of ice in there. And we see so many men in the car, and then they had a hoist run up, run with a steam engine, boosted up and it was, it was the higher they got. And there were several men inside. I don't know, the 75 or 100 men. How many were worked? Would this have been natural ice? Yeah, yeah, they got it from water. They have to call the water for ice ponds up there. <coughs> and he told it was a winter or two, and when we had open winters, we couldn't get any, so they hauled it from Michigan. Because Michigan Central Railway, we had very little. Well, that was for the refrigerator car, you know, they all meet and so on on the, on the railroad train. And it was one of the smaller ones. They filled that, they didn't have quite a big gang, they filled that in a couple of days. And they got they all that ice, I think, from Michigan, from some lake where it's pure. That is for their passenger trains, you see. But the big old ice house, artificial ice, of course, and the refrigeration for us up. And I was, oh, I don't know how long, maybe probably. It probably went to about 70 years ago. And they, they quit using it. And eventually, the, the thing got fire and burned down, I know that. I never saw it. I don't know what it was. Did you have an ice man yourself? Come ever come to your house or well, you know? we there in the late forties there was a couple of young fellows started ice down or something. So we didn't have any ice here. No real no regular ice man. Board. Yeah. Let's have an ice man come there. <laughs> well the the most of the neighbors, anybody who especially did made butter, they most of them did. Yeah, and then the only ice house I ever helped fill was down here at the corner where the Gulf Station is, the fellow had a, made a roadhouse in there once upon a time, a hotel, and started up a roadhouse back in the 20s. And he built a nice house across the back end, right along the building. <coughs> and we filled that. Henry Willis had his team, I think another team, and two or three men on the ice, and two or three of us in the nice house, and we took the whole day to fill it. In fact, that full of ice. I suppose it was packed up there by the city, I don't know. That's the only big job I ever helped do. He had an ice plow and a hot hot equipment. Anybody know what an ice plow is? Some yeah, of the chips got one. Hmm? Some of the chips got one at home yet. Have you? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's in this 84 calendar here. I haven't seen one in a good many years. I'll pass it around. Didn't they used to, they used to cool trains and stuff with ice at one time? Well, that is cool. Yeah. But they didn't put it on top of the train. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, but I mean, where did they put this ice? Like, oh, well, the refrigerator. They have a rack or something like a big ice over it. But I mean, to cool the train. Yeah. I mean, just to cool the food. Yeah, they're full of, full of meat for this. It's a bit of a track for that. But they didn't cool the train, the passenger cars. No, no, no. 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 Oh, you're going to have the ice in the middle of the car. Both at the beach park. Ice shaker. Ice shaker. Refrigerator car. Refrigerator car. 
Yeah. Yeah. I was at home then, yet, wasn't I? I think so. He yeah. thought I would. Uh, he thought you would have been too young to bring ice there when I was home yet, didn't you? Yeah. 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 Yeah
I just got to say that that, that was, um, I'd say it was, uh, I was young enough and naive enough, it was, a, it was an exciting adventure every summer to do this for the summer, and uh, I didn't appreciate, I guess, my grandmother and my mother's uh, um, difficulties operating with an ice house or a nice box at that time sort of thing. And, uh, it got pretty hot, I guess, and I guess the other ladies here would attest to it wasn't, uh, didn't meet the standards of today's refrigeration, but, but we, at that point, we have, uh, our cottage is built on the side of the hill, and the ice house is up on, behind the cottage, and once we got the ice out in blocks, I can't remember the size of it, once we got it out of the, out of the ice house in blocks, we put it on the wheelbarrow, we wheeled it down to the lake, past the cottage, down to the lake, and took the tongs, which are over here, dumped it in the lake, and put it back on the wheelbarrow and then back up the hill to the cottage and into the ice box. And, uh, so I'm sure, I'm sure I'd say the ladies of the household uh, were, were grateful when electricity came in. <laughs> but we still, know, I we still have the ice house today. It's still it's there. Still and uh, what, what we did with it, uh, I helped my grandfather do it. When, when electricity came in and we got a refrigerator, we took the ice house and uh, cleaned out the inside of it uh, and then proceeded to uh, board up the sides and shovel all the sawdust into the sides and, and thinking that we uh, would have some insulation from the from the sawdust in the walls of the ice house and, it's, and it turned it into a sleeping cabin and it's still there today. And, and sawdust still in the walls? The sawdust is still in the walls because about two years ago I had to jack up one corner in the cabin because it was slipping in there and I got a bit of sawdust in my face all day long. So i just like to comment on what you said there about the, uh, the ladies, uh, you know, appreciating uh, electricity and refrigerators, but don't think that the ladies didn't appreciate the ice. And there was many an old family where the father, uh, you take your stuff down cellar, okay? They took everything down cellar and brought it up at mealtime. And well. it was only the real thoughtful fathers that had an ice house and they made ice. And this is a fact. I, I could mention many families that didn't have any ice problem. And they had to take, the, it was up to the wife to take the stuff down cellar and keep it cooling. <laughs> Yeah. Cool the milk, butter. When I mean, you think of it, everything you put yeah. in the fridge. So well. it was a, uh, it, it was a, a, I guess uh, if the woman was fortunate enough to have a nice house, but she was a fortunate, uh, yeah. fortunate woman. So I would keep along there, saw the food or milk on the well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the well. Quite cool. I know yeah, right. down there with your milk, and I know her in the head, uh, really up here in Germany, you remember? My body is an old uh, freezer. Did you? Mm -hmm. I used to take ice in there. Yeah. And he insisted he wanted to go 300 pound cage up overhead. <laughs> and he's walking in the cooler, 12, 1500 pounds. And he and I would put a, a pulley up in the rafter. Okay. And he and I lifted those cakes up there and stood them up over the ceiling. That's Edward Willick, the one that moved out to the river? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lord, see, that was chopping mill one time. And then the slaughterhouse, or vice versa. Then he moved it across the street. That's the house now, you know. Mm -hmm. Right west of the hotel. That first little house. It's part of my house now, that uh, same uh, old walk in still in the back. That little yeah. piece in the back is, is that old uh, is that old cooler. Yeah. Well, well, there, after we put the ice house. I read and, an uh, article in the Reader's Digest about 10 or 15 years ago. Did anybody else read that? Where uh, back in the 1800s, before they had uh, artificial ice made at all, there was a, somebody enter, enterprising people who got to work and they, they harvested ice along, oh, I guess, the coast of Maine along there someplace. And they laid a railroad spur into this lake. I guess there was probably more than one of them. I don't and they harvested ice and run train loads of it and loaded it on boats. And they took it down into Cuba and some of those Havana and uh, uh, Bahamas or some place for some of the posh hotels. Of course, the ordinary guy like you or me didn't go down there. Some of the, the wealthy people had to go down there in the winter. And they had ice. They took it down there by boat loads. That stored it there close to the dock somewhere. That'd be very expensive ice. Just the uh, well to do in these parts of the Did you, anybody else read that? No. <clears throat> well, I read in the Reader's Digest. It went on for a few years until the artificial ice. 
Pat, what do you know about ice? Did you have any experience? I, I'm too young. <laughs> you never had any experience. Ursa, what did you have about ice? Yeah, but, but I've read um, a book about uh, Louisiana when they were um, building those planta plantations down there. And they had this, what, the slaves in one of the boats. And those first the plantation owners, they were rich enough to have their own ice and but one of their children was very sick and they ran out of ice and this child eventually died because they couldn't cool the food. Food uh, spoilers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was, uh, that's actually the first I heard of them bringing ice cakes in. I see. From you didn't know far, before. From yeah. that far, you know. Well, I suppose a place like the southern states of Australia. Bring it down by train loads in the winter time. It's so hard. It's smaller by the time they got it down there. Well, yeah, that came by boat, way down to Louisiana. Yeah. So, uh, Dad, what do you know about ice? Well, did you ever make ice or yeah. did you ever uh, use ice? 200 pound cakes. We got uh, 200 pound cakes out of Black Creek. George Ryder had his uh, ice plow. And uh, we filled our ice house, and it was awful heavy that year. And it was an awful job. Uncle Louie helped, and uh, and uh, my dad, and uh, Reuben uh, Morningstar, he always helped. Because we had to fill his ice house afterwards, and, uh, and it worked together, you know. But I remember that case was awful big. My dad weighed one, and it was over 200 pounds. Uh, it was about uh, 14 or 15 inches thick. Oh, you know, I've heard them tell down in the country, like on Lion Street, for instance, if somebody uh, or on the have a pretty steady winter, maybe around January or something, they used to get 10 inches to a foot thick while they decided they better fill the ice house, or got a, maybe a woman. January thaw and out of it all. Well, then stay cool weather, and it's been done many times, they tell me, that that, that would freeze. Then that pond it would freeze good and solid if it ice clear ice. And the other ice might have a lot of flush out. So after a couple of weeks, it gets a good steady weather, where they can go out and the other ice gets so blasted thick, like you said, 20 inches thick all the around it. It's cut in an old hole or some others that harvest it two or three weeks before that. That's been done quite a bit of it. You'd have to mark that a whole lot of these chunks of ice and some brush and things so people wouldn't drive into it. The drum, I've seen their holes along the creek. Well, we used to drive in the wintertime, you know, before, uh, well, in 1920, I know my neighbor, Mr. Wallace, died, and a funeral went down the creek. They didn't bother the road. From the bridge up at some little bridge to Chippewa, right, right down uh, into the town. They go, they come off the ice at some couple places along down there. They just simply forgot about the creek road. It was just so full of snow that the creek didn't bother. It wouldn't drift. And maybe enough snow there so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't need to, horses wouldn't need to be sharp shot maybe. But I rode that creek more than once. And I remember that spinner going down the ice. And that was in 1920. I didn't go to the I just went to the house. I didn't go to But that, that ice that you made, was it for your own use only or was it for others? Well, no, Andrew Lloyd's ice house was filled and Ruben. But I mean, your own ice, oh, ice house, yeah, was so just for your own yeah. use? And where did you make the ice? It was in Black Creek that year. In Black Creek? Yeah. It was just as clear and nice as that. <laughs> and then we used to make ice at the river. Uncle Henry had an ice plow. And and uh, we'd make it on the river right out in front of the place. And uh, and one year, why he went to drive out around the, to get uh, uh, after we had the field cut, he turned around. He was going to turn around first, and the whole thing broke loose from the the whole thing. The sleigh and the horses and everything started down the river, and he jumped out and well, he got in the water, but. Uh, he scrambled in, and uh, me and my dad was there, and Jim, I guess. We were going, you remember that, oh, Jim? Yeah. We, we were going to school, and before we went to school, why, or else we stayed home, but he kept us home anyway. 
because the horses, uh, we had to walk the horses keep from uh, getting pneumonia after we got him out. But uh, he was there with a horse and sleigh with a cutter, and uh, he drove the horse into the barn quick and got a big rope, and he got that rope on one of the horses to hold him, and we had to pull him in at another place. Uh, they were started down the river ready. The sleigh was swung right around, and uh, Uncle Henry was wet, right in the ice water, right in the river. What years did you quit making ice? Remember? What, up, yeah. up at our place? But I mean, did you buy ice, or? Uh, oh, I think we were making ice, uh, still made uh, ice 1924, 25, oh, yeah, yeah. or longer yeah, than that. that. Oh, yeah. After that, yeah. Up, up the 30s. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Uh, I would think about 35. Yeah, probably. I think it was around about, uh, the last people to make ice down here in my hands, was either ice or I have to help them. They, had, they were the last ones to store ice to, to cool our milk in the summer. <coughs> I used to bring beer over and put on the ice after I worked over the river. When we were making hay, why we'd have a beer cake on the ice, and that was in the 30s when I had come to think of it. Yeah, it might even be 38. Because I started to work over there in 1928. And, uh, a few years after that. When did you get the power in? You probably bought a fridge and I'm sure after that. Well, I bought that, uh, that big walk-in cooler from Ed Willie mm -hmm. and converted it into a, uh, for a, for a refrigerator, eh? Cut a hole in the wall mm -hmm. and the hole's still there with the, the door on it. Uh, What's in there? To reach in, to put the milk and the cream and everything in there, and then he went around and put the big stuff in there, eh? What's in there now? Well, I don't know. We can check and see. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it might even be the icebox was there yet yeah, when we were married, and uh, it, it might even be 39 before we did away or yeah. didn't have any ice. So yeah. then we improvised by buying this great big, which is part of the house now, that part of the house, it's a big walking box. And uh, we operated it until we could buy a fridge off the floor. I know somebody that had ice box in the fifties. Yeah. We did, we did. Ice yeah. Box. And one thing I remember about it, if you didn't dump the water underneath, you had it off the mess. That's right. What a good one. Where did you get your ice from? Uh, I don't know who owned the business, but Andy Somerville delivered ice. And uh, I think Ernie Willing uh, for a while. I think around 40 or 9 or 50 when I guess too many people got a refrigerator. We didn't have a refrigerator at school, but we got one about 50 that day. You say 54? 51. 51. Ma, uh, what do you remember about the ice man, the ice box? <laughs> Well, we, we, liked, ice we liked the Iceman all right. <laughs> Were you the Iceman then, Bill? Yeah, yeah, I remember we used to have that. He was a nice guy. Did you have to clean? <laughs> <laughs> Who used to clean your icebox? Did you have to clean it? Oh, yeah, yeah. After the water? Well, I was a big fan of the youngest, but I didn't use much of it. Jack, what do you know about ice? Well, uh, my memories are from the 40s, I guess. And uh, I grew up in Port Colburn, so I'm a city boy compared to some of you people, I suppose. But we had an ice box uh, just as you did, Marilyn, until the early 50s. And um, it was E.T. White in Port Colburn that had the, the ice business, and he also had the coal business as well, so he kept you warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Uh, I can remember the, the ice man, I think it was a, a fellow by the name of Beck. And he was built something like Bill there. He was really solid, and I can remember him throwing these heavy cakes of, of ice on his shoulder and, and walking into the house. Seems to me they were scheduled to come to our place maybe two or three times a week, and if the weather was really hot, then they would make an extra run. But um, there were various times I would have to 
take a little wagon and go down to the ice house and, and buy blocks of ice for, ice for our family and for the neighbors. Uh, that was real cute. Uh, little short pants and all that. <laughs> anyway, we had a small ice box that held 25 pounds of ice. The neighbors were much better off. They could buy 50 pound blocks at a time. And it seems to me that the price over the years ran 35 cents, uh, 40 cents, 50 cents, maybe even up to 75 cents before we were finished. Most of you have been remembering the game of the ace card. Also, that you know what's to bring in. Well, it's going to be, you see, you the sign is turned to come over here, you're down 25 was up. Jack, do you have any more to tell? No. Jack has mentioned about the cards. Oh, about the cards, yeah. It seems to me we had different colored cards for different size blocks of ice. Green meant one thing, and red meant another. I never heard of that. And uh, these cards before. When you just put it in the window, if you wanted it, you said cards, you didn't want it, you got it. Yeah. Do we have any cards left? <laughs> That's the last well, the well, the milkman <laughs> still <laughs> put a card out. Doris, what do you know about ice? <laughs> I remember a couple times being at Grandma's, Mom's mother, when Bill came. That's about it. Emma, what do you know about the ice man, the ice box? Well, I'm not from this area, but uh, it was mid '50s, and it was a summer cottage that I stayed at with my aunt, and uh, the ice man would come there regularly. That's my only contact with ice, was at the cottage, because we had refrigeration. But um, I think it was 50 cents a block at that time. I remember the price. It was 50 cents. Margie, what do you know about ice? Well, I, we didn't have an ice box. I was one of these that had to trot down to the cellar with everything. We had, a, we had an exceptionally good cellar, and we never had an ice box. We never could afford an ice box. So, uh, I see, so then you didn't have an ice man either. No, there, there was no ice man. No. <laughs> and I don't, even, I don't even recall the ice man even coming in the area there. I think everyone, some of them had dumb waiters, you know, that could get things to the basement without having to run up and down the stairs. But we had to run up and down every meal. We'd run up and down and so take things no down. How did you make your ice cream? Oh, well, we used to buy a bit of ice once in a while to make ice cream. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Where would you go to buy ice? I suppose it was an ice man, but tough place. Well, there's a place in Welland where you get ice. Yeah. So when you're going to have ice cream, you'd run into Welland. I, I've even forgotten who, who ran the ice business. Oh, well, of course, they had a, you'd, you'd see the ice truck around Welland when you were there, but out in the country there. I don't think there was any. I don't recall that there was anyone. That came out. Charlie, what did the orange have in the line of ice and ice men? We didn't have an ice box either. Oh. Well, we were, I guess we were poor then, too. <laughs> we used the sorry. However, I remember doing a little bit of ice helping there in Jim's Pond in the wintertime. That was in the 30s when your dad filled the ice house in the Ruth Morning Star. And he filled his ice house one winter from a pond in our bush, too. I thought to oh. that. So you helped with the ice already? Yeah, look, yes. I remember the plow and oh, yeah. the cuts on my hand. We got electricity, and I think it was in 33 or 34. Yeah, like a refrigerator. Of course, that's another story. My brother was an electrician and wired our house, and then the well, the church wanted electricity to bring it back. The church road there, and uh, the rule of the hydro was that they had to have three customers per mile in order to extend the line. So the church was one, and the manse was the other, and we became the third. And then the problem with that was getting in our laneway. And uh, my father went and saw the hydro in Niagara Falls and got permission to, to uh, put a line in. And we dug the holes for the poles. There was, well, I guess it was five poles then. And they got second used poles for us, and we got the line in for $50 from the road. One of the poles broke off in a windstorm well, some years ago. And I had the hydro change it, and it cost $150 at that time. I guess today it would be $500, but we're down to cheap for it. 
Joe, do you know about the ice man and the ice box? Well, we had an ice cold cellar uh, with the ground floor packed down really hard. And that's where the cream can stayed because we had the cream man come and made, my mother always made her own butter. But what I remember about ice, the only thing I remember about ice, there was a lake north of the village, I'm not from around here either, and they cut ice on the lake and they brought it on big sleighs down to the village and there was uh, several stores and they had an ice house at, uh, it was called Hamel Store and they packed it in there and I remember as a kid we would be coming home from school and that was a big deal to sit and watch these guys putting it in there and putting the sawdust on top of it. And what all that. It's, a little, it's yeah. a little village and it's called St. Hampton. St. Hampton. And it's near Collingwood on Georgian Bank, where the skiers go. Yeah. So but you never really had ice, you had no. similar to what Mark But we had. had, when we got married, we had a little apartment at, in our house. And the ice man had to come up those stairs, remember? Oh, in, uh, in up where we live now. Where you lived upstairs. Yes. Oh, so who was your ice man? Well, well that was, uh, Andrew Somerville. Was it? Yeah. And Ernie or Stan? Ernie, well, I think Stan used to paddle sometimes, too. I see. And we had a card that we put up in the window. I remember that. And as Merle said, sometimes the water went down the floor. <laughs> and we had an inquisitive little one-year-old. I remember that very well because the door was down oh. low, you know, with a latch like this. And, oh dear. <laughs> well, didn't the water man too, you lift up a little flap? That's right, down in right the very bottom. Yeah, I remember grandma's being there. I remember her. Yeah, but I remember going out to the clothesline and thinking, well, he's safe. You know, for a few minutes, well, that was a foolish thing to think. <laughs> I came back and he had taken flour and shook it on the floor, cut milk out of the ice box and went, <laughs> and he was busy <laughs> having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> and Merle, what else? Do you got something to add to that? Uh, well, um, I can remember when I was a kid, I think Dad had, a, I think it was a log uh, ice house, if I'm not behind the house, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember that uh, used to fill that with ice in the winter time. And uh, the uh, he had uh, the ice box was a sort of a commercial thing. Maybe you remember that it was a fairly big one. It sat on the back veranda there. Uh, it was closed in by the side. Yeah, it was a big, big thing. You could put probably a couple hundred pounds in there at a the time, and uh, it had the glass doors on it. I still, I always remember that. Yeah, so you made your own ice then, you didn't need an ice man. Well, not not at that time. Uh -huh. Dad, Dad had his own ice house. I don't know where he, I don't even remember where he got the ice I think we, I helped to fill it several times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Up there, when we filled, whatever. We, yeah. And he used to always be helping. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Take two or three loads down there. <laughs> Uncle Jim, what do you know about ice? I don't know that. Well, that for me. Well, we got another two oh, minutes. Wow, I don't think it's the right side on the calendar. Oh? I think it's 22 inches, isn't it? Well, that's what they have. That's what I have. I don't want to start off. That's 22. I suppose you're oh. just about I didn't even notice what the reading is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just uh, reiterate uh, what most of you said. Uh, First of all, it, it uh, made a lot of employment in the wintertime. You know, there was no such thing as, <coughs> as Pogi in those days. And uh, these guys that built ice houses, it was uh, uh, the big ice houses, the railroads and the hotels and so on. Uh, it gave them a few weeks' work. And it was a big job and a hard job. It was a tremendous hard job, packing ice. And as was pointed out, you know, the ice houses had uh, about a six inch false wall in them, and that was filled with sawdust. And <clears throat> then you'd bring uh, a layer of ice in, and you'd have an ice spud. It was like a spade, only it's got kind of teeth on it. And you'd spud that off even for to stand your next roll on. And then in between, you'd leave a little space in between to pack the sawdust and all around the outside again. So it was a, you know, it was a job. It was a 
Carl and Mayor are making work. Well, I don't know when they started making artificial ice, but I suppose maybe before I was born, they were making some, but I suppose in the beginning when they first started making it, it was probably terribly expensive. Maybe I don't know. But just before my day, really, they say there was just strings of teams going from the ship out of the fall. Was it the fall of the ice? He was putting it up further, too far down. But they'd be cut nice on the ship or a they'd be called. And they say that, as we said, it may work. It may just, when the conditions would get right, the ice would get thick and it'd be sliding, why they'd be strings that came all night. Every hotel has a nice house. And every butcher shop and a lot of other stores and uh, places like that. A lot of it, plus some private, all the people that could afford it. Ordinary working man, he had to go along and if he could. But then, and the ice men, they fill the ice houses, they haul it down there. Oh, yes, yeah, uh, uh, Hendershot, Winnie, uh, yeah, Winnie's dad, and, and uh, well, you know, the Hendershot boys, can't think of their names. Thank you, Bill. Their dad, uh, he had ice and wood business. That was, that was his business, and he had what, uh, hired men. And several teams, and that was, you know, that was. He would make it for other people. Yeah. And yeah. they make it for other people. Oh, yeah, people. in Niagara Falls. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, did he do it for other people? Well, 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 I think so. I think he was delivering it. Oh, yeah, he was delivering it. I see. Yeah, yeah. He was delivering it. He filled people's ice houses. Did he fill people's ice houses? I don't think so. Oh, well, was, was there anybody did that? that? By that time, there wasn't any people that had ice houses. They had lots of ice houses. And he delivered ice in the city. Yeah, he had a nice company around. Ice and wood. They just go get a load and fiddle around. Yeah. Now. He, I don't know, he had a, he might have had a, they were making ice for that time. He got this business. It's all our Do you have something else? Oh, so did it? Yeah, I did supply a lot of work. And uh, as I say, that was important in those days because there was no other income, you know, uh, for people who were just working uh, in summer jobs and so on. And uh, Fred mentioned there about going to Black Creek to get ice. And I remember real well. Uh, the, the river, of course, doesn't freeze out. As you know, you live along the river. It's very seldom that it freezes out very solid, uh, very far, that you can cut ice along the river. <coughs> that incident he mentioned, uh, that was uh, quite an exciting time. And of course, it brings out, uh, <laughs> it brings out the, the character of people. And uh, this Hank Willie, better known as Caesar's Cats, uh, he was an uncle of ours. And, uh, <laughs> He had uh, this team of black horses, and the one was slow and the other one was fast. And boy, they could never please him. You know, old Polly could never keep up, and he, she had a few special names. But when they got in the river, and I could see them, yeah, as Fred pointed out, the, the pipe poles were gone, the sleigh was gone, and the horses were scrambled and tangled up. And my dad, Ronnie and Quaker, however he got that rope out there, I don't know, and got them out of the river. And Poor Uncle Henry at that point. Poor Polly and Dick. Oh, he had sympathy a little bit. <laughs> His heart was aching for the horses. And we had to walk him up and down the road, eh? And cold as well. He was school to walk apart. Yeah, it was like that. Oh, cold. just had to keep. It was a cold day. Terrible cold. But uh, that brought out his character. He had a big heart for them horses about them. <laughs> but it was quite a mess. And Dad had made a skid to. You remember that? The two long poles out of the bush and then cross pieces on it and planks on it. And that's the way he brought the ice up the bank. And that's right in front of the Lexington place up there. And there's a pair of bank. So he pull it up with a horse, eh? And two or three blocks and, and uh, tongs on it and pull it up onto the sleigh. And <clears throat> then on into the ice house. And there was a good sized ice house there uh, to fill. Well, the river, as I say, it only froze occasionally. So he had to go to Black Creek. Well, he went with two teams and slaves, and of course, uh, the, the boulevard, there wasn't snow all the way, you'd take a shovel along, and I think we put on 32 cakes of ice, if I remember, on that platform sleigh, and uh, that was a load, but you'd have the two teams, and you'd get stuck with one shovel snow and cross the parkway, cross the road, wherever you find sleigh. So it's quite a ways from Black Creek down to Usher's Creek, and that's... Uh, you know, it, it was quite a job to fill that ice house, hauling it that far. And as you said, uh, Rube, uh, Rube Morningstar, and uh, who else from up in this area? Uh, Very tough. Oh, Uncle Louie. Uh, no, no, yeah, Uncle Louie always helped. Because, see, we were down here. We were 
more or less straight. Well, where's the wind up in 1919? Yeah. After that, uh, work might have helped. Where did you build a house, uh, the ice house from the side of the road? Out of the pond. Out of the pond. That pond so, was dug new. Oh, I see. Yeah. Sure, so that probably is. We did get a lot from the river or a black creek. Yeah, we did until the pond was oh, dug. Yeah. After the pond was dug. Yeah. Boy, then we, and then, of course, we ran out of horses uh, to pull the ice plow, and you had to have them sharp shot. Quiddy pulled. Hey? Quiddy pulled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then I built that old Model T, uh, put it on a sleigh, bounced on a sleigh with a saw on the back wheel, and uh, used that after we ran out of horses completely. And I sold it up north. Uh, I worked with them up uh, out the Huntsville there. And they were still putting in ice up there when we were more of putting it. He bought, he bought that old Model T. Maybe it's still up there, I don't know. But it worked fairly good. Yeah. You did buy some of the outfits they used to build, Fred and Jim. You fellas raked up more things <laughs> up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something else that I, I wish we had some uh, of those now yeah. for the museum. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Buck rates and everything. Well, we were down here, they got all my teeth. Well, that's what I remember. All right. So, all right. I remember as you said about Wines and Creek, and you could see several places where the ice was cut, and you, you were obliged to put uh, pieces of ice around that so people wouldn't oh, ride on it. Oh, so yeah. It could be a hazard. Yeah, and then as John, I think it was John said, if the ice got too thick, yeah. then you'd go to one of these fields that had been cut out, and you could get you know eight or ten inch ice there, easier to handle. Uh -huh. But when you got up to, as Fred said, there you know, uh, so 16, 17 inches, that, that was terrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you had the same size. Yeah. Yeah. We had colder weather again. Yeah, that's what you remember about it. Chips, and I think a lot of the chips were deliberately made, so we would have some to. Uh, <laughs> and we used to just look so forward to that. In the same way with lawn socials and carnivals, it was always built off the ice. And believe me, there was always lots of chips for us kids, and that was really important to us. Uh, those chips of ice. 
And I remember once uh, the pan overflowing and uh, Grandma's um, uh, icebox. I remember that, that there was water on the floor, and I didn't know what the, about this pan. And I said about the water, you know, and then here that's what it was. It was the pan. And they lifted that up. I remember Grandpa lifted it up and took the water out. But uh, that's that's what I remember mostly was uh, about the chips. And I remember Ann, my sister Ann, I said about we're talking about ice and I said, Oh, she said, one thing I remember about ice, she says, uh, Bill Brook, we always called him cutie pie. <laughs> <laughs> they, they like to get ice. He said, Oh cutie pie's coming, we're gonna get some ice. <laughs> they all like Bill. <laughs> But uh, I do remember um, that, that the chips is the big thing I remember. And I know uh, when uh, it was always made it exciting at lawn socials and carnivals because the ice man was coming there. Of course, that meant watermelon and pop and stuff like that. But now um, I'm finished here, and I just want to give Bill one more chance, and then we'll just throw it open to anybody who wants to talk. But I think uh, Bill's got something else he wants to tell. Yeah. One time we the ball on East Pink Street. I took ice into a potter on the way it was, <coughs> and the darn kid was around the truck had the piece my hands on the pieces. And I uh, took my ice into the house, and when I came back out, there wasn't no kids around, so I got in the truck. And I was just down the street about maybe three or four hundred feet, and all at once, <coughs> and I looked around, and here this little kid was getting up off the street, and he had a dish pan. He had to climb up underneath my car, that truck, after ice, and I didn't work. <laughs> and I pulled over quick and I jumped out, and by that time he was on the sidewalk running down the street, and I asked him, I said, Did your urchin dog? And he was falling, and he went in the house where I took the food was. And I said, Your kid was underneath my truck for the car. <laughs> oh. And luckily, he wasn't hurt. Yeah. But he had been underneath there. Trying to, trying to get a piece of ice. And he didn't realize all of that truck started to move. And he jumped. Oh. <laughs> ice, ice, ice chip, he had a oh. ice chip. He lost all his ice chips. Huh? <laughs> 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 I don't know <laughs> Well, of course, with ice, they tell me I was on a trip for meat at uh, one of the team boys. And three years ago, at the mag, they were charging $5 a hundred. Oh. That's one delivery. I forgot to mention, Fred, that uh, that little ice house we had was just a little insignificant thing there against the garage and all. Yeah. Hard to pack, and still we had ice till the end of August. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you packed the wheel, it would last till the end of August. So we were over the heat of the summer. Yeah, yeah. Did you have an ice house at home, Bob? I never had an ice house. Well, um, of course, I don't know, is there someone here? We want to thank Bill, certainly, for coming out. Uh, we appreciate it <laughs> that, that he came out and uh, gave us a few ideas, because it was, we were going to talk about the ice, the ice man, and like this here. And everybody certainly added to it. But uh, we'll thank Bill for coming out. And uh, for these, there's some other pictures here that he's got, not to do with ice, but I think it was the St. Patrick's Day parade that used to happen in Germany. So, uh, who belongs to the ice ponds there? Oh, they're from the museum. The museum brought some ice ponds, and I see some other things out there. Perhaps it's got to do with ice. The ice tongs were donated by Harry Donated by Harry I know one thing I remember about those ice tongs was I remember Bill carrying the ice, and I couldn't understand how that, why it wouldn't strip out, like, you know. It always seemed as though it was just stuck in such a little bit. And he'd carry that with one handle, and I thought, well, how come that don't fall out of there? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I, used to it. I don't remember ever seeing it fall out, but I remember that little brown one he had. Once you get done, yeah. then they do. I've never seen it at first. But, uh, well, if um, I guess we got coffee ready here, and if anybody else wants to talk with coffee, and we'll turn it back off to Jim now. Maybe he's got some. Yeah, we've got a adjourn here. You don't happen to have a birthday this month, do you, Bill? Yeah, we're going to sing happy birthday for you, but they don't have one this month. We're, we're going to sing one for Jack Darrow, anyway. That's the last one. I don't care if it is the last month. We're going to sing happy birthday for you. Who else got a birthday here? Come on, be honest about it. You know, you're all getting older. Hands up, anybody. Okay, for Jack Darrow, happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 